Okay, so something we're doing here at Michigan State, um, I work with Dr. Christine Skelly, who's an equine specialist for us, and we've put together kind of this uh, package that is essentially some hands-on learning, and we initially created it for youth, but we found that a lot of our adults really enjoy this presentation as well, because I think as adults, sometimes we don't get the hands-on learning as much as we used to as kids, and so it's kind of fun to go back to that. So the idea is to make manure management education fun, um, which is sometimes really hard to do. Not everybody gets as excited about manure as myself and some of my other colleagues. So we have to think of some fun, unique ways to bring that into their everyday life. So we find that a lot of our programming gets implemented into other programs, just so we kind of have people there already, essentially. Um, so, the first lesson, we have about five lessons we go through, and it takes usually a little over an hour. So if we do have shorter time frames, we condense it down a little bit to some of the more um, important things. So the first lesson, though, that we talk about is uh, the weight. How much weight does the manure weigh that a horse produces? So this specifically focuses on equine. You could do this with any other species, though, essentially. So we first start by going through how much does a horse eat? So an average 1,000 pound horse is going to eat around 20 pounds of hay and five pounds of grain per day, and then drink about seven gallons of water, which equates to around 58 pounds of water. Maybe they get some treats in there, so you know, give or take a pound of carrots, which is actually quite a bit for a horse. So, um, and the average horse poops about 10 times a day. So with that in mind, we ask our participants, how, how heavy do you think that manure is? So if a horse poops 10 times a day, knowing what those input, uh, inputs are, what is the output weigh? And so they usually are actually pretty good at this. And they guess that it's about 50 pounds and that's just one horse and does not include any bedding um, or anything like that. So, um, and I just wanna make sure, Okay, yeah. And then we go through how much manure does a horse produce in a year. And so before we get to this point, I'm just going to quickly go back here. You'll notice that in this picture here, um, this is with some of our kiddos from Detroit Horsepower. We bring in about a 50 pound uh, bag of grain, 20 pound bag of bird seed, or what we've been using recently is cat litter, and then a five pound bag of candy. And we have each, we have one person come up to hold each of those and guess how much they think each of those weighs. And so it gives them this really good visual as far as the size of the different um, items being used and how much that really plays into things and that this is how heavy that manure is. So then we look at, after we tell them how much in a day, we look at what that production looks like over the course of a week, a month, and then a year. And so by the time we finish, um, they can see that a horse poops about 16,500 pounds of manure in one year, which is around 8.4 tons. Um, and if you were to factor in stall waste, because we do need to factor in bedding, a lot of our horses are stalled, um, especially some of our higher end show horses, a lot of those are stalled a lot more frequently than some of our others. And so we factor in around 20 pounds of bedding per day. And again, this is just kind of average. It's not necessarily specifically true for every single farm. But once you go through that, we move from that 8.4 tons of manure per year to 11.8 tons of waste per year. And so the kids really, and the adults seem to really latch on to that um, once we've kind of gone through that, that weight hands-on activity with them. The next one we do is we look at the volume. So now that we know the weight, we go through how much space does that actually take up for, for your farm? So we take, you can see in this picture here, we have uh, boxes we get at Home Depot. You can get them at, gosh, we've got them at office supply stores before and such. And so usually the square footage, it's, it's or not square footage, it's usually about a cubic foot or so. It's just a little under that. So these boxes are around a cubic foot and we, have them construct the boxes um, and we also have them blow up balloons to represent the manure. Depending on how a ton of your kids are, you might want to use a different 
um, different item besides balloons, but balloons work really well. So we have them blow them up, fill the boxes, and then we stack all the boxes together so they can get an idea of the amount of space that takes up. And that's just one day. And so usually at that point, they're like, wow, or that's really gross. Um, but usually it's a pretty good reaction because they seem to respond really well to that. So we talked about that and then we go through, okay, so now that we know this is how much one horse takes out volume wise with their manure in one day, how much of that is found to be in one year. And so basically what it comes down to is around a large van or a small bus for one horse. And the thing that we bring them back to then is saying in Michigan, the average horse farm has anywhere from three to five horses. And so when you consider having to find space to park five small minibuses on your property is probably a little difficult. That takes up quite a bit of space. And again, that doesn't include stall waste. That is purely manure. So the third lesson we go into then is the idea about nutrients within that manure. So we know a little bit about the weight now, we know about the volume. Now how much uh, or how many nutrients, what's the concentration of the nutrients in that manure and why is that something we're concerned about or something that we're looking into? So first we'll go through what the actual composition of manure is. So we talk about the different nutrients that are involved. So your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Obviously there's others, but those are the, the three we really talk about. Um, manure has about 15% solids and then it's about 85% water. So before we end up going into this scenario here, um, or no, excuse me, I'll go through this first and then I'll tell you the hands-on activity we do. So we have three different scenarios here of potential manure storage op options. So um, the first option we use to say, you know, this is probably not the most ideal situation for manure because we don't necessarily have an impermeable surface. And we also have, um, clean water hitting that manure. So we're not diverting that clean water. And so what happens is we lose those nutrients potentially into surface water, which can create those algal blooms, right? Um, we do let them know that while um, this isn't necessarily the best option, it's definitely an option here in Michigan if you need to stockpile your manure, but that it's important to consider the location if you're going to do that for these very reasons. We then talk about the idea of having an impermeable surface. So if you move into that middle section there, um, you can see that this poop emoji is sitting on a concrete pad. And so we're starting to help the potential leaching issue we might have with nutrients, um, but we're still not quite diverting that clean water. And so we've got one little fishy swimming down there to show that yes, we are capturing those nutrients a little bit better, but we still might be losing nutrients to runoff. The last option then, is our covered manure storage. And so in this instance, we have put the manure on an impermeable surface or one that nutrients aren't gonna leak through or leach through. And then we also are diverting that clean water. And so we have a nice little school of fish down at the bottom of, of the picture there to show that the chances of having nutrients enter into the surface water is a lot lower. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is change this from saying bad as in saying, you know, something saying it's not the greatest probably say good, better, and then best in those instances. So what we end up doing then for our hands-on activity is taking um, a couple small plastic tubs, sponges, and food coloring. We put water in the little plastic tubs and put the food coloring on the sponges and the sponges represent a field. And so when the field is dry or when the sponge is dry, we have a less likely chance of having that, uh, having those nutrients run off into the water. When that sponge is saturated, so then we put a lot of water into the sponge, we soak up the water and then pour water on it. What'll happen is the food coloring starts dripping off and going into the water in the actual plastic tub itself. And it turns usually a pretty nasty color of brown when we do that. And so we kind of help them to understand in that way that um, that is a lot of manure. <laughs> one day. But essentially we help them understand that way that this is what happens when we apply nutrients on ground that can't soak it all in. And they seem to really latch onto that. So I recommend a lot of paper towel if you're going to do that though. Uh, maybe putting down some plastic tablecloths too because the food coloring will splash. 
Okay, so then we talk about what are some potential options um, from a volume standpoint as well as a nutrient standpoint to kind of help combat some of those potential issues. So we discuss composting and, and the benefits of composting. So we know that composting reduces the volume of manure in a lot of cases by, by half. Um, from there, we also know that it decreases odor it tends to kill weed seeds, which for horses, that's something that's really highly talked about. Um, and it makes it difficult sometimes for our horse owners to actually get that manure off their farm or have it sold to other people because they're concerned about weed seeds. So composting is a great method to kill weed seeds if it's done properly, helps to kill diseases, and it also stabilizes the nutrients. So um, the fourth activity we do, well, it, actually, this is kind of related more to the, the nutrients, so it's still within that, that uh, second, or sorry, third lesson. But we, we talk about different locations of manure storage as based on the information we just went through. So I have a Playmobil set from when I was quite young, still have it. And so we set that up and then I have a little poop emoji squishy thing that I use um, to kind of show different places on the farm. And I ask them what the pros and cons are of each of those different places. And they're usually very, very good and attentive at knowing what are the benefits and what are the potential, um, what are the potential issues with those locations too. And so you can put it behind the barn for instance, and they say it's great, it's convenient, but we might have pest issues. We might have fly issues. Um, we put it next to a wetland and they're very quick to laugh and say that's not a good spot because we just went through why we don't want to put manure close to water. And then we put it in a covered storage with a concrete pad and usually they're like, oh, that's the best option, which is kind of the idea that we're going for. So then we get into the idea. This is usually where we would cut it off if we need to uh, make it a shorter lesson. However, if we have longer, we do go into the land application of manure then because a lot of our horse owners do apply their manure outside of just the horses being on the pasture. Um, a lot of them will use it for hay, for instance, if they grow their own hay. So we talk about what it looks like to spread that manure and how to calibrate a spreader and why that's important. So the first one we do, it's, it's a little bit bigger scale. So we take a tarp, we take a five gallon bucket, this is where we take that five pound bag of candy and it becomes our manure and then um, a, a scale. And so we let them know, okay, so here's what we need to do. We're gonna put the tarp in the bucket and we're gonna weigh that first. And I ask them how much it weighs. And so it usually weighs around two pounds or so. From there we go ahead and I have a couple people spread the tarp out and then we go over the, the tarp with our, our manure applicator or our, um, our spreader. And with that, we take the candy and kind of shake it out. And then I have a couple more volunteers collect the tarp up and then put it into the, the bucket. And we weigh it again. And I think it usually weighs, well, it weighs seven pounds because it's a five pound bag of candy. And I ask them, okay, so how much manure is actually on that tarp? And usually they're pretty quick to say you have five pounds. And so then we go through, um, there's a couple sheets and I, <laughs> I think it's from, is it North Dakota State? I think that has them. Um, and we go through how you actually calculate what the calibration is. And so by the end of doing that, we know how many tons per acre we're spreading. And I encourage them that this needs to be done three times to get an average because that's how we know we're being a little bit more accurate about how many tons of manure we're actually spreading. And we talk about the different ways you can change that application rate. For instance, in a lot of cases with horses, we're not talking about a GPS spreader, we're, we're talking about either um, going quicker, going faster, as far as the speed is concerned, miles per hour with the spreader, or we slow down if we need more. So then from there, what we do is we bring it down a little bit smaller, and Leslie's gonna touch on this a little bit, so I won't go into it into too much detail, but we made little kits, little uh, calibration kits for them where there are three different size tarps, so sheets of paper that have chocolate sprinkles glued to them. Um, and they're all different sizes. There's also a kitchen scale, a ruler. Um, I think that's it off top of my head remembering. So we have them take whatever that square footage is um, of the manure. 
we have them weigh it on a kitchen scale. We have a conversion chart for ounces, um, for how many ounces it weighs and convert that to, to pounds. And then the correction factor. And then they go through in small groups and figure out how many tons of manure per acre they're applying. So it's pretty nice. They seem to really get it after we do that, that bigger scope spreading um, and then do it on their own. So we found that it's been really useful to kind of go through this curriculum. People find it very interesting. A lot of times they don't know how much their horse is actually contributing from a standpoint of manure, um, not just from a, a weight or a volume standpoint, but also potentially from a nutrient standpoint and why it's important to consider where we're storing the manure and how much we're applying from the manure. So yeah, so these are just some resources that are available that we have, they're hot linked. So, um, Leslie, I don't remember if you're sending these presentations out after, but this would be accessible for you guys if you're curious. Um, and just a couple other resources that we've, we've created for, for our horse owners here in Michigan. So 